So hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to my talk. It's basically unleashing potential while relaxing the mind, which in very simple words mean what a company can do for you so you don't burn out, you keep growing, and you stay productive. And first, who am I to be telling you about this? That's me. You can call me Benjamin, and I work for a company called Xteam. I've been a contractor for the past 10 years, and I worked in office, I worked remotely, so I worked in two careers, as a translator and as a developer. So I would say that I do have some overview of what companies do well and do wrong in that regard. I work for a company that's called Xteam. It's a 100% remote company. From the CEO to the last developer, everybody's located somewhere in the world. But still, this company does things in a way which keeps its developers extremely happy. Maybe not the highest paid in the world, definitely not, but definitely one of some of the happiest developers in the world. Now, how do we get there? First, before we set out the plan, we defined five human resources pain points. And these are a lack of motivation. What does that mean? It's really quite simple. When you first get a new job, you're all excited. Oh, you, have, you get to work a new project. It's a new company, you have to make a good impression. You put all of yourself in there. You're really motivated. But after a while, you get used to the project. It becomes routine, and your motivation plummets. Second one, lack of growth. As your motivation plummets, you also stop learning. I would bet that everybody here has some drive to learn new things. Most developers, all developers I ever met had that drive, learn new things, especially those in JavaScript with a new framework every week, right? So yeah, learn new things, yes. But then you get on a project and things somehow slow down. You learn the API, you learn everything there is to know about the architecture. And if it's, a, if, if it's an older project, then you're working with something that's been out there for 10 years. You don't really have to learn anymore to stay competitive. So you stop. Because humans are naturally lazy, aren't we? We'll come back to that. And with all of that comes the lack of loyalty, which is especially a thing that millennials, younger generations, get accused of. Why don't we stay at the same company our whole lives? That is the dream, right? At least the Slovenian dream. But we get a new chance, a better opportunity, we jump ship. Because why not? Why not? What do most companies give their developers? Not much. A paycheck. And we will get back to this as well, about how to fix it. Next thing, lack of team spirit. When you're working in a team, which is more a group of people than a team, things can function, but they generally do not, do not work really well. For example, if you have a team of Michael Jordans, sorry, a group of Michael Jordans playing against a team of Scotty Pippins, my money would be on the Pippins because they work as one unit as opposed to just five singular really good, but still singular pieces. And finally, the dreaded burnout, which we had a great presentation on just now. That is the one thing I would bet everybody here has experienced, or at least come really close to. And that's why I don't really have to explain it, I think. You know what it is. You get depressed, you, don't, you feel like doing nothing, your productivity suffers, and all of these things just collapse. So, let's go onwards. Okay. So, the one big thing, well, one of the three big things, really, we decided to do to fix this is have a really, really strong company culture. And I think we went one too far. So, sorry about that, company culture. What do I mean by that? Most companies have a bit of a, okay, now we are just one cool company and you work here, all of that. In X-Team, we decided to go a step further. We have a superhero culture. And as funny, as corny as that may sound, it actually works. You may be aware of a psychological experiment a teacher did, where she basically told her students that blue-eyed students are smarter than brown-eyed students. On the coming tests, blue-eyed students did better than brown-eyed students. Then she switched roles, and the results on the test switched. This is because humans, humans, in general, have a really strong drive to be consistent with expectations that are placed upon us. 
In our company, we decided to do it with superheroes. If you're a superhero, you are supposed to be good. You're supposed to share your knowledge. You're suppo supposed to help other people. And it turn out, turns out this really works. We have charity drives, company organized, where developers can choose to donate money to causes they themselves vote on. And the company will match the money, will match the donations. We have things like Secret Santa, which again, the proceeds and everything can go to good causes. We work on open source projects. We help other open source projects, even by financing them sometimes. Obviously, we don't give millions, but we give what we can give. And this superhero idea of you have to help other people grow as you yourself had a mentor, somebody who helped you out, this really does wonders for motivation, for morale, for growth. But that is not everything. We have a really strong, I don't know what's okay, a really strong team building culture, which ties into that superhero culture. Because you have the Guardians of the Galaxy and they're a team, right? They're a weird team, but it works. The same as us. And this is another thing I really suggest you look into. How to turn a group of probably really good developers in your company or your teammates into your actual teammates. How well do you know them? You may spend eight hours, nine hours, 10 hours, 12 hours if you're a startup, every day with the same group of people. But how well do you actually know them? What's the name of your, uh, your partner's pet? So your team partner's pet. Do you know that? What's the name of their girlfriend? What do they like to do in their free time? Do you have any bond with them besides professional? Now, some people say that this is a bad idea to actually get closer, up close and personal. We disagree. We like to really put our developers together in situations where they can bond in one way or the other. Some of these things are, for example, simple. We have game nights. Now, remember, everybody in our company is spread out toward, uh, all over the world, from Hawaii to the Philippines. So huge time differences. But we make it a point to spend time doing things together with game nights, which the company supports, because it's in their best interest. We have our CEO actually runs an RPG, like a Dungeons and Dragons thing, with the backstory for our company culture of superheroes. Does it sound lame? Perhaps. But it's really fun, it works really great. People participate. You have people taking time out of their day just to play that game with other team members. Then we also have, we do everything on Slack. And we have a ton of channels where people can discuss anything. From what's happening in Syria to what Trump just did last week or last night on Twitter to uh, what their favorite focal length is for photography lenses, anything and people talk, people react to each other. Again, this brings people together. Then, I did not mention that yet, but we technically we are an agency for developers, even though one wouldn't notice. But once somebody is off a project, because the project is over, we do not just like, kick them to the curb. That would be really bad for that team spirit, wouldn't it? So, what's a better way to do it? Give them an opportunity to stay a part of the team to stay in there, in that motivational team building bubble. So we have a program where developers who are off a project at the moment get put into an internal, we call them wings or X Academy. So internal program where they can continue working on some things we could find convenient on some open source perhaps. They keep getting paid in that period. Maybe not their full rate, but still a good rate. And that keeps people there. They are not afraid of losing their job, their livelihood, just because the project is coming to an end. Now, all companies may not be able to afford that, but if you can, demand that from your boss or ask them really nicely and give that to your employees because it works wonders. People don't want to leave because they know they will be taken care of. If you read The Godfather, that's supposedly how the mafia works. They take care of their own, even after they may not be of current use. And finally, there's the obvious things. Send your developers to conferences. Ask your employers to send you to conferences together as a team. If the company pays for it, even better. 
basically spending time together. This is the key point of this one, of team building. Have people spend time together. Our biggest one in this regard is our out outposts. Like in the previous presentation, it was mentioned they went to Thailand for a month. So did we. It was fun. I will tell you that nothing brings a team together better than almost dying at Muay Thai trainings together, so Thai boxing. Exploring a tropical island on scooters nobody has ever driven before and trying not to get killed. Finding a snake in the Airbnb <laughs> where you are staying and figuring how to get it out. <laughs> Maybe it sounds ridiculous, but again, these are experiences that bind people together. You can always talk about them, you can laugh about them in retrospect. <laughs> and this is what will keep your team together functioning as a team. But that's not everything. The third part, which is the holy grail, I like to say, of how to keep people happy, is simply to give them the closest thing to a friend somebody can have in a company. Actually, usually it is a friend. Basically, this is what I do most of my time. I'm an unleasher. This means that I have one, approximately one fourth of our developers with whom I talk, just that, simply. Once per week, sometimes more, we simply sit down and have a chat. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, an hour, whatever. We just talk about motorcycles with some, about games with others, about their favorite pet projects with the third group, whatever, but we talk. I get to know them. We, have, we actually have four people like me, four unleashers, for our many developers, and all of us do this thing. It is our job and our pleasure and privilege to get to know our developers personally, to be their friends, not because we get paid more if they are more productive, but because to, get, to work like that, you actually have to be that kind of a person. We get to know them, they get to know us. We can be the person they trust. If they are feeling burnt out, or even hopefully before they are feeling burnt out, they can come to us, they can tell us what's wrong. It may be a kind of awkward to go up to your boss and tell them, see, um, I'm feeling a bit unproductive. Uh, could I perhaps you know, get some slack? That's awkward. Even if the boss wouldn't mind, because it's an update, it's weird. That's where we come in. They can tell us. And we will forward that information upwards in the right way. Because the business part of the company, they know what's happening on the business side, but they do not know the background behind that. And if people, we discovered, if people, employees, feel that they cannot honestly talk to the company, so to say. They feel that there is a wall and that doesn't work really well. It will always, always keep barriers. And those barriers kill productivity because they know if something goes wrong, what do I do now? Who do I tell? I don't want to tell them, but I have to tell somebody or my results might get me fired otherwise, you know. And not just that, we know that person. So even if something goes wrong, we can be in their corner. When business comes and asks, so look, this wasn't really done well, what's going on with you? We are there, even before it comes back to that developer to bite them in the behind. Uh, we are there, we can clear things up. We can tell them, listen, this person, their hamster just died, they're feeling really unhappy because of that. Can, can you give them some slack perhaps, you know? And that usually works. And as developers know they, they have somebody to trust, they relax. And the relaxed person will want to grow, will want to work hard, because they know it's worth to do that, just to stay in there. But not just that. One of our main things is also to help people grow. Everybody has to have an opportunity to study, to improve their own knowledge. Because most people honestly want to. Most developers definitely want to learn new things. And if their only chance is to just learn on their own free time without any structure or anything, people do that or people don't do that. With us, it's simple. We basically set a simple goal until next week. It can be as easy as read a blog post on topic X. And next week, we'll talk about that a bit when we chat. And people do it because they feel they are being held accountable, but not in an adversarial matter. Not like if you don't do that, you're going to be fired. But basically, they make a deal with a friend. We're going to study that. We know who else in our company knows 
things about what that person wants to learn. We can connect them. We are basically, if our superheroes, if my only she is Batman, I'm his Alfred, so to say, whatever he needs, I try to get that for, for him or make it as easy as possible to get for him. Again, a huge point in keeping our developers relaxed. And all this together, what I mentioned. So the company culture, it has to draw you in. You have to become a part of that company culture. With team building, within that company culture, the team is really important. Without a team, nothing really works. And with the unleashers who basically bind all of that. Because everybody gets an unleasher. Even a new person who gets into the company, they get one. And they are being introduced to other people. Like I worked at companies where basically, and probably all of you have. So you're the new guy. The CEO or the head of the human resources, whoever, takes you around. So this is the front end room, this is the back end room, uh, this is the secretary, and I work back there. Go say hi. How does that make you feel? I would guess it can get a bit awkward, weird. Um, you're basically standing there, so hi. Yeah, not, not perfect, definitely not. Here, on the other hand, you join. You have one person who will basically go, everybody listen up. This here is my man. He's going to be working with us. He's awesome at a list of things. He'll be doing that and that and that in that specific team. Come with me. So these are your teammates. You get the idea. And not just that. There's a whole initiation ceremony, to put it like that. There's a monthly meeting of the company run by the CEO. It's just a Google Hangout. But it's something where everybody gets together, hears the news, new people get introduced, everybody's given high fives, applause. You know, there's a, if you've ever been to a pyramid scheme marketing seminar, I will not say, we are not like, we're definitely not a pyramid scheme, but we have learned some good things from how they operate. Or well, that's how I would put it anyway. We took the best things. Basically, make people feel like they are important. They're an individual who other people care about. And so far, I can say that we have some team members who live in places in the world where at least I wouldn't move to, to live if I could avoid it. And they have, I mean, they're senior developers. They obviously have an opportunity to move just about anywhere in the planet, right? Visas for coders everywhere. They choose not to because they would have to switch companies. <laughs> because all of this, what I described, gives people a sense of belonging. And this sense of belonging should really be, oh, for crying out loud, should really be the goal. This is the, thank you. This is the quote by one of our developers who came to us from another agency. Basically, when you start working for Foo Incorporated, you are an employee of Foo Incorporated. Once you start working for X-Team, you become an X-Teamer. And this is the final big lesson I would really want to leave you with today. Your job, business owners, CEOs, is to make people feel like they are part of the company. Not necessarily shareholders, but at least through the culture. And you, employees, contractors, whatever, if there's any way for you to organize your jobs, or rather your work environment in a way where you can start feeling like you're a part of something else, something bigger, not in a religious sense, or maybe in a religious sense, then I promise you that will make your life better. Your team will work with you better. You will know you have somebody who will be there for you. If something goes wrong, your team won't be like, no, no, that guy did it. We, we were cool. He messed up the pull request. No, they will be, okay, something went wrong. Mistakes were made, right? And they will stand behind you and fix it together. And once you have that level of security, it doesn't even matter if you have a contract for work, so an employment contract where you cannot even get fired unless you burn the building down, like in Slovenia, or if you're just, just a contractor. Because you will know you are safe, you can afford to make a mistake, it won't be your head immediately. And once all that is done, you will be motivated, you will grow, you will not get burnt out, you will have perfect team spirit, and everything will be rosy, I promise you that. Just give it a chance. 
And now I would like to thank you for listening to me this long. And if somebody has any questions, one more thing before that, just we are actually, this is perhaps more for the developers than business owners or both. We will be starting an Unleash Beyond program, which will pretty much take people from anywhere, other developers to be able to experience this unleashing, this, all of this culture, at least to a degree. So if somebody's interested in that, come up to me later, I'll explain some more. And now, if there are any questions, the floor is open, yes. So the question was how to motivate people to learn outside of the working time, which is a... If they don't have uh, enough available working time for that project. So if there's not enough time on the project to learn as well? Yes, if they don't have a proof that time, mm -hmm. They are very busy on their projects and they mm -hmm. don't have enough time to invest in that learning mm -hmm. process. Good question. So, what we did with extraordinary results, as I, th as I said, we were four unleashers, right? So, back then there were three, to be honest, but still. Each one of those unleashers was assigned a house name. If somebody read Harry Potter, you may remember the Tri Wizard tournament. We did the Tri Unleasher tournament where points were gained for doing pull requests, for doing learning on their own time, everything on their own time, for studying on their own time, for writing blogs, for basically there was a huge array of things you could do to gain points for your house. The motivation behind that was the winning house got to choose which charity got a donation from the company. Believe it or not, maybe it's the company, I personally believe it's because of the company culture, people went absolutely crazy about that. It was basically an in-company competition, but still for a good cause. So there weren't really losers and winners. Everybody was participating because everybody wanted to make sure that we can help somebody. That worked. I would say it's a great, it's, it's a great deal because of the company culture. I said, superheroes, we help. But if that doesn't work, um, this unleashing process we have, it's, kind of understood that you participate in it when you join the company. It's not really an, a total must do, but once you join, most people, once they read about it, once they hear how it works, they want to be part of that because they get an unleashing budget. So they get uh, what is it, something around $2,500 per year to spend on their learning. And that itself, like they can use it to go to conferences for, I don't know, egghead courses, for whatever, as long as it per pertains to their growing professionally. And that seems to help. That's, that's really all I can tell you because it works within our company specifically because of the culture, because the culture really is the basis for everything. Because the people want to be, have to want to be part of it. And once they do, like if all of your friends are doing it, most people get pulled along. It's not really a question, it's more of an observation. Um, one thing that resonated with me during the recent Uber debacle mm -hmm. in sexual harassment was that um, I read that there's a common misperception that HR, the job of HR is to look after their employees' well-being. It's actually not. The job of HR is to hire people for business needs, right? Uh, so I just wanted to say that you know, I love the idea of the unleashers. And the mm -hmm. I think every company should have something like that. Thank you. Uh, just to clarify, unleashers are not really human resources. Exactly. We also do development and all that. We, our job is not to decide who gets hired. That's a specific part. We are there just to, to be at least one person in the company everybody can really bond with. Most people bond with a bunch of other team members as well, obviously. But yeah, thank you. <laughs>